that's okay. You want to pay $28 billion for dark urine? I'm totally with you. <laughs> dark urine. Dark. <laughs> Why do we do that? Why do we do that? Well, I think I understand. We hate big pharma. We hate big government. We don't trust the man. And we shouldn't. Our healthcare system sucks. It's cruel to millions of people. It's absolutely astonishingly cold and soul-deadening to those of us who can even afford it. So we run away from it, and where do we run? We leap into the arms of big placebo. <laughs> That's fantastic. I love big placebo. Yeah. But you know, it's not, it's, it's, it's really a serious thing because this stuff is crap, and we spend billions of dollars on it, and I have all sorts of little props here. None of it. Ginkgo, fraud. Echinacea, fraud. Akai, I don't even know what that is, but we're spending billions of dollars on it. It's fraud. And you know what? When I say this stuff, people scream at me and they say, what do you care? Let people do what they want to do. It's, it's, it makes them feel good. And you know what? You're wrong. Because I don't care if it's the secretary of HHS who's saying, hmm, I'm not going to take the evidence of my experts on the mammograms or some cancer quack who wants to treat his patient with coffee enemas. When you start down the road where belief in magic replace evidence and science, you end up in a place you don't want to be. You end up in Tabo and Becky, South Africa. He killed 400,000 of his people by insisting that beetroot, garlic, and lemon oil were much more effective than the antiretroviral drugs we know can slow the course of AIDS. Hundreds of thousands of needless deaths in a country that has been plagued worse than any other by this disease. Please, don't tell me there are no consequences to these things. There are. There always are. Now, the most mindless epidemic we're in the middle of right now is this absurd battle between proponents of genetically engineered food and the organic elite. It's an idiotic debate. It has to stop. It's a debate about words, about metaphors. It's ideology. It's not science. Every single thing we eat, every grain of rice, every sprig of parsley, every Brussels sprout has been modified by man. You know, there weren't tangerines in the Garden of Eden. There wasn't any cantaloupe. There weren't Christmas trees. We made it all. We made it over the last 11,000 years. And some of it worked and some of it didn't. We got rid of the stuff that didn't. Now we can do it in a more precise way. And there are risks. Absolutely. But we can put something like vitamin A into rice. And that stuff can help millions of people, millions of people, prolong their lives. You don't want to do that? I, I, I have to say, I don't understand it. Um, we object to genetically engineered food. Why do we do that? Well, the things I constantly hear are too many chemicals, pesticides, hormones, monoculture. We don't want giant fields of the same thing. It's wrong. We don't want companies patenting life. We don't want companies owning seeds. And you know what my response to all of that is? Yes, you're right. Let's fix it. It's true. We've got a huge food problem, but this isn't science. This has nothing to do with science. It's law. It's morality. It's patent stuff. You know, science isn't a company. It's not a country. It's not even an idea. It's a process. It's a process. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But the idea that we should not allow science to do its job because we're afraid is really very deadening and it's preventing millions of people from prospering. You know, in the next 50 years, we're gonna to have to grow 70% more food than we do right now, 70%. This is an investment in Africa over the last 30 years. Disgraceful, disgraceful. They need it and we're not giving it to them. And why? Genetically engineered food. We don't want to encourage people to eat that rotten stuff. Like cassava, for instance. Cassava is something that half a billion people eat. It's kind of like a potato. It's just a bunch of calories. It sucks. It doesn't have nutrients. It doesn't have protein. And scientists are engineering all of that into it right now. And then people would be able to eat it, and they'd be able to not go blind. They wouldn't starve. And you know what? That would be nice. It wouldn't be chez panisse, but it would be nice. And all I can say about this is, why are we fighting it? Why? I mean, let's ask ourselves, why are we fighting it? Because we don't want to move genes around. This is about moving genes around. It's not about chemicals. It's not about our ridiculous passion for hormones, our insistence on having bigger food, better food, singular food. This isn't about Rice Krispies. This is about keeping people alive. 
And it's about time we started to understand what that meant. Because you know something? If we don't, if we continue to act the way we're acting, we're guilty of something that I don't think we want to be guilty of. High-tech colonialism. There's no other way to describe what's going on here. It's selfish, it's ugly, it's beneath us, and we really have to stop it. So after this amazingly fun conversation, <laughs> you might want to say, so you still want to get in this ridiculous time machine and go forward? And absolutely, absolutely, I do. It's stuck in the present right now, but we have an amazing opportunity. We can set that time machine on anything we want. We can move it where we want to move it. And we're going to move it where we want to move it. We have to have these conversations and we have to think. But when we get in the time machine and we go ahead, we're going to be happy we do. I know that we can. And as far as I'm concerned, that's something the world needs right now. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.